Hi students. In this video we're going to go over the hole wizard and why it is so critically important that you use it compared to doing a simple cut extrude of circles to make holes. Let's start off with a simple example. Let's say I do the wrong thing and then compare it to doing the right thing. So I could simply create a hole by creating a new sketch on the face, and I'll draw a circle. And of course I need to smart dimension it, so I locate it and size it. I'll make it two and a half inches over. Seven eighths of an inch down. I'm going to set the sizing. Oops. I'm going to set the sizing at three eighths of an inch. I have a fully defined sketch. Everything looks good. I will exit. I'll do an extrude cut. I get my preview of what's about to happen. I'm going to change it from blind to through all. So I pierce the entire part and say OK. And now I have a hole, 3 8 hole through my part. OK. Let's go over to the blueprint. Now I haven't shown you how to make blueprints yet, but I'm going to keep this really simple. So here's three, three views and an isometric of my blueprint. This is the hole I just made. I'm going to insert the hole call out for it. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. I drew a 3 8 hole, 0.375, and cut it through, and I got the proper hole call out. Let's go back to our part. Let's do something just a hair more complicated. Now let's say we want to make this hole threaded. Okay, I'll insert uh, an annotation. and I'll put a cosmetic thread on it. Choose the edge. It's an inch, it's a machine thread. SolidWorks is asking me what size. So under all the options, I don't see 3 8 hmm. Well, there's a good reason for that. The simple answer is that if I drill a 3 8 hole and try to put a 3 inch thread in it, there's no material to cut away. So the tap or the thread cutting tool would actually just drop right into the hole and fall through. So what size do you need? What hole size is appropriate for the tapping tool for a 3 8 16 thread? Uh, the short answer is Normally, I don't know, but all of that information is stored in the hole wizard. Now, in this case, I do happen to know. So let's go back. We're going to modify our sketch. And I do happen to know that if I make it 5 sixteenths of an inch, 313. Say OK. Exit. And now I do an insert annotation. Three eight sixteen is one of my options. But I had to know that. If you have some exotic thread, like say a three eight twenty four or an 080, or a number 356, you're going to have to take time to look all of that up and 
you may or may not get it right, and then there'll be problems with your print. You're far better off to just let the whole wizard do it. I'll say OK. So now my model is correct, but let's go over to the print and see what happens. Hmm. Let's put the whole call out on this. So I'll insert, annotations, whole call out. And you will learn all of this later. Notice that if I hadn't already had an annotation there, it comes up wrong. So it's not telling me anything about the threads. This is what would have come up if the part had been closed, excuse me, if the drawing were closed, and then I reopened it. Let's try again. Let's see if I can actually click on the dotted lines which represent the outer diameter of the thread. Nope. No matter how close I zoom in, I just cannot pick on those threads. Okay. Let's try doing the same function a different way. I'm going to go back to my part. Let's put in this same thing, but use the whole wizard. And watch what happens. I'm going to choose the whole wizard. Over here is the icon for straight tap. This means just make a threaded hole for me. I'm going to choose ANSI inch. The type will be tapped hole. 3816 through all. And with thread callout, and I'm going to apply cosmetic threads. All of this stuff, uh, oops, let's get rid of near side countersink. We do not want that. Okay, so to put the hole in, I'm going to click on the positions tab. It highlights the face that it's going to put it on, it gives me a preview. I'll put my new hole right next to the other hole. Hit Escape. Now, just like the first hole, I have to smart dimension it. Come off the edge. And let's see, it's four inches. Make it seven eighths of an inch, just like the other one. And I'm fully defined, so I'm good to go. I'll click OK. Now, those two holes look pretty much identical. Let's go back over to the print. Okay. SolidWorks still gave me a bad no, but OK, at least the threads are called out. You should never, ever, ever have lowercase notes on a print. Okay. Everything should be in all capitals in this class. So I'm just going to delete that. But just clicked on it and press the delete button. Now I'm going to say insert, annotation, hole callout. Click on the hole. Hey, look at that. So this time, it put everything in properly. The first line says the diameter of the tap drill. So it's telling the machinist, drill right through the part with a 5 16 drill, and then tap it 3 8 16 unified national course thread through all of the part. That's pretty nice. And I didn't have to look anything up. So let's move that over here. 
Now, this functionality becomes even more important when we get to some of the more exotic holes. So let's put some other holes in and see what happens. Uh, go back to my part, zoom out a little bit. So what else do we have in this hole wizard? We have counter bore holes. These are very useful. Let's say you have a situation where you need to put in a fastener, a bolt, a screw, something like that, and you can't have the head above the surface of the material. Maybe there's parts that are running close by, some articulating machinery might bang into the bolt head, something like that. So you want it below the surface. Well, a counterbore hole is a really good way to go. And when I come down here, I'm just going to run through the menus like last time. It says ANSI inch, which is our standard, the type. So you just pick whatever kind of uh, bolt you intend, intend to use. So I'm going to use the common hex screw. You choose the size of the hex screw that you're going to install. So these are all your smaller bolts or smaller screws. So if I wanted to put in a quarter inch screw, I'll choose that. The fit, do you want it normal, loose, or close? Meaning how much play do you want in the hole? How much can it rattle around? Okay. And just like last time, I'll choose position. Come over to the surface and I get a preview of what's about to be created. Again, smart dimension. Five inch. I'll stick with seven eighths. Say OK and OK. My hole has been created. And it's all the exact correct dimensions of that quarter inch screw that I want to put in it. And back in the part manager, I even get this nice fully described callout counter bore for quarter hex machine screw. Now that's pretty nice. I didn't get that with just simple cut extrude. Let's go look at the print. Now I'm going to put the whole call out in for that print, that hole. Wow, look at that. So it says take a .266 drill, which is in every machinist toolbox, drill all the way through. This is the symbol for counter bore, a diameter of 5 eighths of an inch, down 190 thousandths. And I didn't have to look anything up. So I hope you're starting to see that by using the whole wizard, you're accessing a lot of information and you're going to get your design correct without having to search through tables and tables and tables. Let's do some more. Back to my block. Oops. I'll do the whole wizard. See what this one does. Countersink. Okay, this is another style of flush fastener hole. So let's click on it. Our standard is going to be ANSI inch. Type flathead screw. The U.S. customary units are 82 degrees. and That's something you'll learn in machine design. Hole specification, quarter inch. Okay. Do we want tight, loose, or normal? I'll say just normal. And through all. So I'm going to click on the positions tab. Click on the face that I want it. I get a preview. I'm going to hit escape so I don't add any more. 
locate it. Say OK and OK. Same as last time, countersink for quarter inch flathead machine screw. So I get this nice call out, which tells me exactly what it is. I'm going to go back to my drawing. Here's the hole we just created. So when I put in the hole call out, there's the 0.266 through, the countersink symbol. This is the width of the countersink and the angle. So it's doing a lot of work for you. You don't have to remember which line comes first. Does the countersink line come first? Does the through hole come first? It's all right there. And we didn't have to do any uh, funny sketches or anything like that. Okay, see what else we've got. Okay, tapered tap. Okay, this one you're going to use for piping. When I try to put two pieces of pipe together, and I'm talking about metal pipe now, the threads are tapered at 1.8 degrees. So as I tighten them together, I screw them together, they get tighter and tighter and tighter to the point that they form a liquid tight seal. So you're going to do this for any kind of plumbing type applications. So if I click on it, it works just like the other taper tap. So we'll go with ANSI inch as our standard tapered pipe tap. These are all of your pipe sizes. Eighth inch national pipe, quarter inch, half, three quarter, one. So let's say I want to put in, oh, let's do a three quarter pipe thread. Tap drill through all. Get rid of that near side countersink. And I always want a cosmetic thread. Let's use the position. Click the face that I want to put it on. Whoops. Clicked a little too fast. Let's go back into that. So I'll say Edit Feature. Click on the Positions tab. And now I'll locate it. I'll just accept these dimensions. Okay, that's kind of a funny looking hole, but it's actually accurate. So because the thread is cut deeper at the top, it kind of fades away to nothing as you go through the part. If my part were thinner, I would end up with threads right down to this level. So, and again, get the nice call out, three quarter inch national pipe thread tapped hole. And when we come over to the sheet, I'm not sure why it drops in these awful initial notes, but we'll just delete that. We'll zoom in a little bit. Put a whole call out on this. There's the call out that should actually be on it. So the machinist needs to use a 0.906 drill, drill through, and then run a three-quarter MPT tap in. Back to our part. See what else is good under the whole wizard. We're not going to bother with this legacy stuff. Counterbore slot. Now we can do one. 
So these are used when you have either one or two fasteners and you need a lot of side-to-side -side play. But just like last time, the standard is inch. The type of screw you want. Let's do let's do socket head cap screw. This is the type of screw that has a hex head internal and you use an Allen wrench for it. If you're not sure what an Allen wrench is, I can bring some in. Okay, the, now we're going to choose the thread size. We'll choose quarter inch. Slot length. Let's do this graphically. Choose the position. Okay, I'm going to choose escape. If I were to left click again, I would add another one. I don't want to do that. I'll choose the width of it. So five. Make my slot a little wider. Now I need to locate it. That is just the right size for dropping in a quarter inch socket head cap screw. I'll bring in examples of all of these so you can actually see what the part is that I'm talking about putting in place. If for some reason you don't want to have the head of the fastener underneath the surface, we can do a common slot. That's also under the whole wizard. That's right here. Common slot. This one I find a little bit odd that it's under the whole wizard, but uh, you know, it, it works. So again, it's going to ask you what's the standard, what size. So there's all these different sizes. The problem I have with it is you don't make this feature with a drill. So that's just a little bit odd to me. But if I'm going to drop in one of, well, it, this is actually a dimension thing. I'll show you in a minute. So we can do custom sizing. We'll say through all. Click on the surface. There's my slot. Change the length if you'd like. Or locate it. And let's see, I'm still underdefined. What do I need? I've got the origin, the width. set the angle. I'll do that with a relation. Make it horizontal and I'm fully defined. There's my slot through the part. And with this slot, the slot would be, or excuse me, the fastener head would be right on the surface of the material. print. Everything's updated. There's my call out for that slot. And the call out for the other slot. So I hope I've shown you in a compelling way why it's infinitely better to use the whole wizard compared to just drawing circles or drawing ovals and doing cut extrudes. It's much, much easier once you get to the drawing phase. 
your prints look far more professional. So I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and thank you for watching. Bye.